Uh, this way a little bit. Yep, yep. Put the gun down. Shocking crosshair placement. Hey up troops, A little Littleton here again with another video and this time we're going to be looking at, you guessed it, crosshair placements and essentially how to win more gunfights if your crosshair is in the right place. So this video is slightly different because I've actually included gameplay clips that I've recorded tonight. Uh, one of them, by the way, is a 1v3 on Nighthaven Labs, which is particularly good. I'm pretty proud of it. Five seconds remaining. Well, I've seen people commenting saying, yeah, it's all well and good telling us this, but actually show us in game. So what I'm going to do is I'll run through the theory, if you will, of how to improve your crosshair placement and what you need to be doing. And then I'll show you the gameplay clips. Like I say, there's a 1v3 in there. And there's also a really, really interesting clip on how to base your crosshair placement based off your utility with Fenrir on canal, I think. But the, what we'll do is we'll talk about it and then I'll show you in game so we can try and sort of make it a visible representation of what I'm talking about in a, in a real life game. That's enough waffling, way too much waffling. Let's get stuck into it. So the first thing we need to do when we're talking about crosshair placement is talk about sensitivity. Sensitivity obviously is the time that it takes from your mouse to go A to B and how far you move your mouse to do that. I have quite low sensitivity. I play 400 DPI, 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, but a lot of people play much higher sensitivity. Now, it's whatever, there's no right or wrong thing when it comes to sense. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. For me, I have, if I put my mouse in the middle of my mouse mat now and I move my mouse right to the edge, I move 180 degrees almost exactly. And that isn't because I just like moving 180 degrees. That's just what feels nice to me. And again, middle to the other way. Ignore the desktop. So if I was to do a full swipe of my mouse mat from one side all the way around to the other, it's about a 360 degree turn. And I sort of, I just know that from muscle memory. However, if I was to up my sense um, for, and move it down really low to say this, um, I have a sense multiplier, so don't worry. I don't actually play on 85. 85 for me means my sense is actually 8.5. So 26 for this would actually be 2.6. So if I was to play on 2.6, like, and I do a full sweep of my mouse mat now, that's a full sweep of the mouse mat. So that's like playing on 2.6 cents, literally impossible without putting your arm out of socket. But this for me now feels crazy if I had to move from A to B to try and flick to an opponent. So first things first, when it comes to crosshair placement, is getting your sense right for what feels right for you. And the only way of doing that is by practicing different senses and eventually you'll get to one that feels right. What I would recommend is probably not using, say, Shiko Sense or Bolo Sense. Maybe start there if you want to, but if I were you, I would make sure you get your sense. You you are you. You are not Shiko. You're not Bolo. You're not me. You're not anyone else. You're you, and everyone's sense will be different for what they enjoy and what feels natural to them. So first things first, make sure you've got the right sense. And what I always say about sense, I bet you it's lower than you think it is, in my humble opinion anyway. Once we've got a sense right, we then need to start thinking about game sense, which will lead to crosshair placements. And I'm going to mention this a few times throughout this video, but crosshair placements, half of the battle, one is putting your gun in the, your, your crosshair in the right place, but another half of the battle is knowing where the likely places the enemies are going to be and the likely angles they're going to be at, and also the map knowledge to know that there's a door, for example, on the garage here, there's a door at the bottom of there, but it goes down some steps. So if you were to peek the door that would be here, your crosshair would be like this. However, when you get there, now your crosshair's too high. So you know when you're coming through this door that your crosshair's got to come down slightly to be at head height, but that only comes with playing the game and learning and having game sense and all that other good stuff. So what I've done with this site, by the way, is I've set this up as if you were going to try and take rafters yourself. So we've got the head holes here. We've got the line of sight into cash. I'll show you what that is in case you don't know, because not everybody does. Um, so that line of sight there is something defenders quite often do. So they can stand on this table and now you can see the rafters stairs, so anyone walking up there. It's a really common line of sight, and it's something you should always check when you're going up the rafters stairs. So, let's just jump back down here. So, half the battle with crosshair placement is game sense. So, if we're going to be taking rafters, first you would drone it out, right? And you would go up the rafters stairs, and you would know that there's someone usually playing behind P1. So, this is panel 1, this is panel 2, that's 90. So, P1, P2, and 90. There's someone behind P1. First thing you would do, though, is check that there was no one bottom garage. Now, if you were doing this properly, you would actually take your drone through the back of garage. If you wanted to drone the bottom garage, you would bring your drone in through the bottom first, behind the rafters, so the guy on rafters can't shoot your drone on the front door. So you bring your drone in through the back, make sure there's no one bottom garage. If there is somebody bottom garage, you then work together with your team to open the back of garage and have an angle from the door here, but also to shoot them in the back from the, the soft walls at the back of garage there. This isn't about how you take garage, it's about crosshair placement, but that's what you would do. Now we know there's no one bottom garage, we know there's somebody rafters. So, now you know there's somebody rafters, you've got to start thinking about crosshair placements. And what you can do as well is, if you know he's behind P2, 
is you can peak P1 and get your crosshair placement right before you sweep across to P2. Now, it can be... Ideally, you don't want to be sweeping across slowly like that. You want to be getting your angle right because you're going to know it after playing for a while and peaking where you need to peak. But you can use that as like a guide stick, a yard stick, if you will. Move it across, and then you know where you're going to be need to be for P2. But what you need to do then is obviously fight the guy on rafters. And let's just assume you kill the guy on rafters. Then as you come in, you do what we talked about, where you know the game, because you've got the game sense, and you've been playing the game for a while, and that will only come with time, you're now going to see the door down the steps. But you, what you're doing is you're going through each angle at a time. So I've talked about this loads of times in the past, but you pie in the room. So let me give you a better exa example of pie in the room. We're in blue, and we want to come out of blue and go towards bar, which is that door there. So if we want to come out of this door, we can't just come out of this door and walk out because there's one, two, three, four places you could be shot from. And, of course, anyone who's just in the middle of this room. But in Siege, people typically aren't stood in the middle of a room holding you there. They're going to be taking cover themselves holding you here. Or taking cover holding you here. Whilst we're here, shoot the shoot box. So they're going to be in one of those four positions. Typically, yes, there could be somebody stood in the middle of the room. But it's not as common. So what we want to do is we want to first check every angle in order of where you could be shot from. So you wouldn't get to the top of blue stairs and check this angle first because you'd die to here if somebody was there, right? You wouldn't get to the top of here and check top red first because you'd die to that angle, that angle, or this angle first. So what you'd do is you'd get to the top of red stair, uh, blue stairs sorry, and you'd check this door. You'd, and it, Obviously, you'd drone it ideally, but if you face check it, you'd check that door. Then we check lounge door. Then we check stock door. Then we can check top red. But you, every time you do that, you know where your crosshair's got to be because you know which angle you're going to check. You're not just wandering out and moving around, sort of having a little look around. You know those four angles in your head before you... And you, it's like you've got to do sort of, sort of a mini flow chart in your head. Like, you've, before you get to this angle, at this point now, you've got to be thinking here, hang on, if I come out of this door, where could they be? And it's like a constant sort of flow chart in your head. Are they at this door? No. Okay, move on to the next one. Are they there? No, move on to the next, etc., etc. So, that's where crosshair placement will come into the knowledge of where the doors are. So if you know the door's here, when you get to the top of here, you know that you don't want to be peeking here when you go through this door, because the door's there, right? So you're going to get that ready before you peek it. Because you know the door's there, your crosshair finds itself where head height is. Same again for the other one, same again for the other one, same again for top red. I don't know why I always crouch when I, like, peek a door. I always do it. I never peek a door stood up. I always peek a door crouched. I don't know why. So that there is an example of pie in the room. You check every angle before you check the last angle, before you know it's clear. So crosshair placement in itself is easy, right? On a doorway, there's your head. Give or take. You know what I mean? Depending on the operator, because some are slightly bigger or slightly smaller, slightly wider and slightly thinner. Or more narrow, should you say. But that will come from, as I say, game sense and playing the game longer. Obviously, I'll do an in-game example of this and try and break it down. I've actually done that already, and I played bank, so I'll show you that at the end of um, the clip that I'm talking about here. So we're back outside garage, we know rafters is clear, we've got to this point here and we're going to check this door. We know rafters is clear, we know bottom garage is clear. As you come in, your next angle that you've got to worry about is the door. We know that the door's slightly further down, so we bring a crosshair down slightly for head height on the door. And as we check the door, we hold it whilst we go to here. Now the next angle we've got to worry about is exactly what we spoke about before, which are these head holes right here. Now typically speaking, this breach here is going to be open, so you don't have to worry about anyone peeking the window because the breach is going to be open. But by the time you get to here, you know that there's a threat. You, you're soon going to be hidden from that angle, so there's no more threat from there. But your next area of threat is, of course, the angle that we talked about before. So you move your crosshair up to here. Once you get to here, you hold this angle the whole way because you're not going to be peeked from anywhere else. And when you get to here, you don't have to worry about that angle. Now, again, we're doing that mini flow chart in my head. Now, where's the next angle somebody could be peeking me from? And the next one is behind this server rack here. Unless the breach is open, then typically nobody's going to be there because you'll have a player on the breach. So no defender can stand there. So the next, when you get here, the next angle you're going to get shot from is top red door. So I keep saying top red door. Is construction uh, door or cash door. And they're both the same angle. So that's construction door. This is cash door. So they're both the same angle. Obviously, you've still got this angle to worry about as well. But given that you've held that all the way up garage, we're going to assume nobody's there. And what will happen is classic siege timing is the minute you look away from that angle, someone will stand on the desk. You'll then peek this and now somebody's here. Happens all the time. And if that does happen, that's the game. That's FPS. That's things happening now of your control to an extent. See, so when you get here, your next angle you want to worry about is uh, cash door and construction door here. But because you know they're there, your crosshair's already in the right place.
When you get to here, if there's nobody there, when you get to here, your next angle you've got to worry about is top red. Now, again, have a look at top red. It's slightly further down than it would be for the door. So you would peek here and get an angle. People head glitch from top red all the time. I mean, playing grim, you'd probably just fire some bees in that direction, but people like head glitch that all the time. Come back across. And that's your angle there. And then again, come back and check here. But the cross, I keep saying this, and I can't make this any more clear, I don't think. The crosshair placement comes from knowing where enemies are likely to be. So let me just go back down into lounge again. And this is this is a really key point here. If you were to just walk out of this door with your crosshair here, and as you walk out of here, there's an enemy there, the key part of crosshair placement is trying to reduce the amount of correction that you need to do when it comes to shooting at this door or this door. So you want to be holding your crosshair here, and then, or it's just let's just use the middle of the door, right? So you put your crosshair in the middle of the door. If an enemy peeks left, you've only got to move that far. If an enemy peeks right, you've only got to move that far. Using this door as an example, if we hold the crosshair in the middle of the door, you've only got to correct yourself to there or to there. Using the door frames as an extreme example, obviously someone's head could be there or there. You would only need to correct yourself this distance. So good crosshair placement is giving yourself less area to correct yourself. So if you were to walk through here and your crosshair was here, Someone could peek you from this door, or someone could peek you from this door. So having your crosshair here means you've got to move all the way over there, or you've got to move all your way over there. Which is why you would peek this door first, and then this door, and then a bit of movement comes into it, because you can use this wall's cover here to not expose yourself to that door. So you can move yourself out of here. This is, again, assuming top red's clear. It's not a great example of this, because there's four different angles you can die from, but let's just pretend it's this door and this door that exists. You can hold the crosshair on this door, and as you come out, you can take the cover behind the wall. Once you know that's clear, then you can peek there. But, the, again, let me just repeat that. Good crosshair placement is all about giving yourself less correction between the movements that you need to do. So, as I say, coming out of here, looking at this door would mean the correction I only need to do is either there, 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 you know, somewhere along that line of where their head's going to be. It's not putting me crosshair here and having to flick all the way over to there, because flicking is great and if you're great at flicks then you're probably going to be a decent player however reducing the amount of times that you need to flick is generally a good idea if you have to flick onto an enemy it's either because they've surprised you or you didn't check an angle properly so if you were to come out of here and then check top red oh sorry check this door check that door and then just walk out and start walking here and you didn't check this angle you'd have to then flick all the way over that was a bad flick ignore that you would have to flick all the way over to that door but because you didn't check that door, that's why you've got a flick. If you'd have checked it, you'd have seen it. But again, try and reduce... A good crosshair placement is just all about reducing the need for correction and having your crosshair in the right place to begin with. And you do that one more time. I feel like I'm repeating myself now. But you do that by knowing the angles that the enemy's going to be at so your crosshair's already in that right place to peek. And last but by no means least, before we get into the gameplay clip, is... A massive thing that I'm actually not very good at, and I need to improve on this myself. But when you're holding an angle, let's just say we're using this door as an example, right? Okay, what you don't want to do is put your crosshair on the very first part of the door where that enemy could appear. You're probably playing the game on 30, 40, 50, 60 ping, or even more depending where you are in the world. And if that's the case, you're not going to be able to react physically enough to shoot as soon as somebody's pixel first appears there. What you're much better off doing is putting your crosshair in this area... And by, their head, by the time their head appears here, your reaction time will shoot when it's about here. So if we were picking, let's use a different example coming back this way. So let's use blue door. If someone was to run past, I mean, holding an angle like this where somebody, um, you can only see a certain section of the door is fine. But if you were holding, um, not the door, but let's just say somebody's going to be coming out of garage. Someone's running across like this, right? So you're going to be holding this angle. So what you, what you don't really want to do is put your crosshair like that. I hope this, I don't really feel like I'm explaining this very well, but I hope this makes sense. You don't want to put your crosshair there because by the time you shoot, the enemy's probably going to be about here. So to give yourself an easier chance, you want to be putting your crosshair about there. That's rough, in my opinion anyway, unless you've got superhuman reactions. But given the fact that you're going to be playing on, on a certain ping, they're going to be playing on a certain ping, the game's got to process it as well, which obviously only takes milliseconds, but it still is at a time. If somebody's sprinting past here... You know, it's it, it's not long that you've got to react to get that shot off. So again, if you're holding this angle here, just step it out. You don't, you know, don't be putting it over here. <laughs> you don't need it up here if you're holding this angle. I'm being a bit facetious there, I know. But if you're holding this angle, just pop it about there. And then it gives you... Because you, you're certainly not going to be hitting the shot there. 
unless they quick peek it. So if they were to be like quick peeking you as well, then they only might peek that very, very slightly. But in that time, you can create, you can correct from there to there, right? It's much easier to correct from there to there on a quick peek than it is to correct from there as they're sprinting off up red stairs. So from this angle, just step it out slightly, and I'm telling you, you'll win more fights. I'm not very good at it. I always do this, and I don't know why, because then the guy runs past me, and I'm like panicking trying to catch up with him as, he, as he's ran past, because my reactions aren't quite quick enough. So just give yourself a bit of a buffer room is probably the best way of describing it. We're on Night Haven now then, and we're going to try and play Tachanka on the vending stairs or uh, exo stairs. Looking in towards games and lounge, you get a nice little angle over the shield there. Hello. Hello, Zubu. Um, I'm not mad keen on the quick play setup, leaving these walls reinforced. I don't think that's a good idea, personally. Um, we're just going to hold this here. This is the only angle they can come from below. So when I say don't hold pixels, that isn't this instance where we're holding between... Hang on a minute, if I can get it right. So we're holding between two objects. It's okay to hold a tiny angle like this because it also exposes less of you. Where I'm saying don't hold the pixels is where if I was holding the shield, I wouldn't hold here. I'd probably hold just a little bit off there. Do you know what I mean? He's died over there. That gives us an opportunity to get a kill this way. So this is a perfect example. I'm not going to put my crosshair here. I'm just going to come off the wall slightly. And hopefully somebody comes past this angle and I can show you how much it benefits you because your reaction times aren't that good as much as we think they might be. Someone coming up the stairs behind me. That's literally a perfect example. You see, as soon as she appeared, I reacted. But because it took me a little bit of time to react... Hang on a minute. Because it took me a little bit of time to react, by the time I pulled the trigger, her head was perfectly between the crosshair. That is a perfect example. And use utility as well as a way of knowing where your crosshair needs to be. If somebody's stepping into that goo mine, they can only be in one place as that goo mine activates. So you can use the... Um, you can use the, the utility to give you an idea of location. We'll try it with Fenrir, and I'll show you exactly the same thing. Fenrir Ironsides, I think, is the plate. Um, and we can, yeah, do the same thing with barbed wire, prox mines. You know, you don't just have to use a primary utility of an operator for this either. Um, prox mines and barbed wire work really, really well. Hopefully, I can try and do that with... Uh, let's try old. Let's try playing around Old Bridge. Let's make a rotate here. I'll tell you what, the, the quick match setups have got so much better recently. We we'll make a head hole here. And that's just to hold that hatch drop in case somebody falls. Ten seconds left. I had another drone. Five seconds left. So we'll put that there. That'll cover red stairs and the entrance from museum. But what we're going to try and do is use this area to know when someone's walking down. Hopefully I'm going to stay here. We know the door's here, so as soon as you hear that F not go, you put your crosshair where you know it's going to be, and you peek it. You don't need to put your crosshair here and then move across, because you know they can't... If you just put your cross here and move across, that would be because you don't know where down this bridge they're going to be. If the F not's just gone off, they can only be at the entrance to this door. So just get your crosshair there before you peek it. I know we've got a few F not's left here. Oh, someone's on that window, I think. Just lower down. That's annoying. I should have punched that first, really. So, let's try and use that F9 again. Come on, please. Somebody play into midpoint. Okay, there's someone at the other end of the bridge. They just shut the default cam. Not ideal. Someone's above us as well. Loading you back! It's perfect. I just had to check I was recording then because I wasn't sure I was recording. But that's a perfect example of how to do it. You know that there can only be in that area. You found a bomb. You so we're on the attack now. I'm going to try and show a similar thing on attack. We're actually going to go to the bottom of fish stairs. And hopefully get in that way. Now. Okay. Oh, wrong drone. Let's see what we want. Oh, I've just did a cap cam putting traps down, which is not ideal. This is our window here. Which trap? Which door was it on? Not this door. That one. So, what we've got to think about now is this is what you have to do most. You have to do this on defense, but most want attack is once I come through this window, 
which is not a great place to enter, by the way, because I could get um, shot from either side, although we've droned it to know there's no one that side. Let's have a quick look at the top of the stairs. Yo, I'm constantly thinking now, doing little progressions in my head about where can I get shot from as I come through here. Just going to get rid of this. And as I move around here... You must recover the diffuser. 1v3, this is ideal. So there's someone at the end of this corridor. Oh, they're already there. I mean, that's an incredible flick. I'm glad I've recorded that. Um, I'm now thinking, where else can they be? I've got 4 HP, it's a 2v1, and I'm against the smoke called Suck Me Daddy. Which is not ideal. We're going to go back this way. So now I'm thinking about the angles they're going to be on. So it could be vending area. Towards garage. And we've got this smoke, which is an issue. I have got hard breach charges. That's right, so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to be off this and this. And now he can't push me whilst I open this wall. I'm going to open that wall and disappear back this way. I'm going to slow walk my way around here. Just trying to listen for a sound from him. On the window, maybe? Just need a sound, man. HP in a dream, baby! So, I didn't say it in time. He says, sure, bruh. I didn't say it in time. I want to say I recorded that for a video. Thanks. I didn't have time to say it there, but I was thinking in my head constantly, you know what we're going to do, actually? This is what we're going to do. We're going to keep the clip rolling. And I'm going to tell you what my thoughts were then. Let me get on a custom match in Night Haven quickly. And I'll go through what, exactly what I was thinking then as to how I've deduced the fact... Oh, well, I've had a sort of educated guess that that was the only place he could be there. So, let me just show you this. Uh, let me create this, play this, um, and I'll be... Yeah, Grim's fine because he's got a bailiff. Um, in fact, let's just play Zephyr because then I can open the rotates much faster. Um, so, I mean, I probably should edit this out, shouldn't I, really? If I was any good at YouTube, I would edit this out. But, you know, no, I want Zephyr. We're in it for the journey, lads, so... And I need a ACOG, which I haven't put on in time, but don't worry about that. Um, so... The way I was thinking then, and this is what you have to do on attack, is to just constantly sort of... Um, it, it, it's like, like I said at the, the start of the video, it's like a flow chart, right? You're just constantly trying to deduce where they're likely to be. So they had a rotor here, didn't they? So, as I've come through here, and they had, we had the uh, hole here as well. So I bead there, and then I bead this angle here. So I knew that he wasn't in that corner, because I was thinking he was going to be just tucked here like this. So we knew he wasn't there. So then we've got to here. We checked this door, because I thought he might be holding this door. And then I had a look at where the diffuser was. And if I remember rightly, the diffuser was like over there on the other side of that wall, I think. So then I thought, well, maybe he could be down that corridor. But then I thought, well, I was just down that corridor and we didn't have a fight. So he couldn't have been down there. So the way I thought is he's got to be in this room. The only place, if he knows I'm coming from here because the time was running out, the only place or the most logical place to hold from here would be this area here. And to be honest, I thought he was going to be tucked right in this corner here. Which this would have been a better angle for him to hold, to be honest with you. But I've, I've all that sort of, and this is what you'll do over time. You know, I'm not a genius, not by any stretch. Thank you very much for thinking. No, I'm just kidding. But in, you're sort of problem solving, all the tiny little problem solving um, flowcharts in your head at all times. You get to here and you think, 
Where's the most, especially when there's two seconds left on the clock, where's the most likely place he's going to be? Right, well, that is probably to the, he called me to the left, obviously. Probably going to be to the right. He could have even just been, I mean, what would have been set hindsight's horrible in in Siege? If he just chills here, or just holds that angle, I'm so dead. But instead, he was holding this sort of angle here, and we managed to get him. But that's what I was just thinking then. Obviously, in the height of battle, the heat of battle, I didn't have time to vocalize that or verbalize that, sorry. But that's the way you've got to think as well. And that lends itself into this video because if he is going to be here, if I can go back and watch the video, and I'm hoping I would have done this because I think I did, before I um, turn this corner, I didn't come through here and go like this. If you looked what I did is as I came through here, I turned to the right before I came through the rotate. So my crosshair was already going to be in the rough area where he was going to be. I had to make a slight adjustment. But if you'd noticed, and I think I did this, I might be just making this up because I haven't gone back and watched it, but... As I came through the rotate, I didn't come through like this and sweep around. I've already got my crosshair in the position that I think he's most likely to be in. Which is roughly what happened, give or take. Although it has just happened in my head, and maybe I'm glorifying it a little bit, I don't know. But anyway, there you go. A live game of it actually happening. So there we have it, crosshair placement. Genuinely the thing that will make you a better player overnight if you can improve it and try and think about those little flowchart things we were talking about. Those little mini equations that you do as you push through areas of the map. Don't get me wrong, if you've just started playing the game, this is something that you can work on every single time you play it by learning the angles that they're going to be on and putting your crosshair in that place in future, knowing someone might be there. Can take time when you're first learning the game, but don't give up because it's one of the most rewarding games when you get it down and you start learning the angles and you put your crosshair on certain angles where people are and you're like, yes, I've learned that. It's one of the best feelings in the world, I'm telling you. Thank you very much for getting involved with the video. I really, really appreciate it. All the likes, comments, and subscriptions recently have been absolutely insane. If you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed, please do so. Or if you have subscribed and you haven't liked it, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment. I don't know, say, um, adult multivitamin. If you want, you can say adult, adult multivitamin. If you can't, oh, think of someone that's comment that might be constructive. If not, say adult multivitamin. Because comments, likes, and all that sort of stuff really help the algorithm pushes the video to a wider audience from YouTube and sort of exposes the channel a little bit more. And I really, really appreciate it. So thank you once again for getting involved with the channel and I'll see you next time. Cheers.